Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find, or rather are the ones that you will find on page number 307. Please turn to it. Page, page 307 and today's is lesson number 76. The first problem that we are going to do is problem number 17 which has to do with the take home pay. Problem number 17 and we have to calculate take home pay for this individual. Something that we did, something that we did on day number 22 and 23, if you recall. And if you have not watched those videos, you might find it useful, you might find it fruitful to watch those videos to get some, some more for more practice. Anyway, we are, we are told here that we have a medical assistant who receives 1460.16 per period. 1460.16. 1460 16 per pay period. Then they're going to tell us that the deduction per pay period are as follows. Deductions per pay period. Make sure this part is consistent with that part. You don't want to find out that they are telling you the gross pay in terms of per pay period and the deduction in terms of per week or vice versa. Make sure they are consistent. Here they are. They are both per pay period. In which case it doesn't matter what the pay period is, whether it's weekly or fortnightly or, or monthly. Do you understand? It, it doesn't matter. Let's do the deduction. We are told that the federal tax it's 136.21. We are told that the federal insurance is 76.68. We are told that the state tax is 106.24. We are told that the retirement is $50 even. And finally, we are told that the health insurance is 89.51. We're not going to waste our time adding up these figures precisely. There is no need for it. You can round things up and you will find that the answer choices are so far enough apart that you should be able to locate the right answer with the approximation that you have done. And in the event, once in a blue moon, if you find that the answer choices really are too close to each other, then what you do at that point is you still do not add up the way they are written. What you do at the end is you, you find the adjustments, and we have done that many a times, but I've shown you how to do the adjustment towards the end. We'll see what, we'll see what will happen here. We'll see how things pan out. 136.21, we can just round that as 136. 76, 76, let's do it here, 136. 76, 76, 68, we're going to round that as 77. 106 and 24 dollars, we're going to round that as 106 dollars. This is 50 dollars even. And then we have 89.51, which we're going to round up as 90 dollars because it's 50 when it's more than 50. That's all. 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 plus 6 is 19. We get a 9. Carry 1. Carry 1. Then we get 7. 3 plus 7 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. 11. This 1 and this 9 will make it 10, and 3 plus 7 is 10, so this 10 and this 10, 20 plus 5, 25. 5 and 2. What I did was I took this 9 and I added that 9 to a 1 to make it 10. Then we have a 3 and a 7 that makes another 10 plus 20, and then we have a 5. If you're going to go all over the place like the way I did, make sure you concentrate. Do you understand? Otherwise, you lose track of some things. 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. That's it. $459 dollars it looks like is the reduction. Let's take care of this word here because I, 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 I inadvertently ended up using it 
and uh, you probably are not used to it. Americans don't use this word uh, very often. So let's, let's, since it came out of my mouth, let's take care of it. What I said is that, make sure that the pay period are consistent. And here they are consistent. Here, the gross, pay, gross amount is expressed in terms of pay per period, and the deductions are expressed in terms of pay per, per period. Make sure that we do not find that one thing is expressed in terms of week, uh, gross pay per week, and the deduction pay per, per period, and then you find out that the per period, per, and then you find out that the pay period happens to be a fortnight. In which case you have to you have to do the adjustment. You understand? Fortnightly, which simply means every other week, every other week, or as you guys like to call it, bi-weekly. Americans, you guys don't say fortnightly. You say bi-weekly, but that's what it is. Fortnight is a period of two weeks. Fortnight is a period of two weeks. I'm looking at here. Oh, there we go. On day number sixty-three. In our vocabulary lesson. In our vocabulary lesson, we learned on, uh, in our vocabulary lesson in day, on day 63, we learned this word along with some other words having to do with time period, fortnightly. You understand? For example, the difference between biannual and biannual, and so on and so forth. Anyway, six, 459 is the deduction. Total deduction, our gross pay is 460. Listen, tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be lazy here. I'm going to pretend it's 460. What the hell? Let's just pretend it's 460. 459, 460, so it's 1460 minus 460, you see 1460, 1460 minus 460, so the take home is going to be, take home amount is going to be $1,000. Take home is going to be about $1,000. Or if you like, had we left that as 459, had we left that as 459, 460 minus 459 would have been $1,001. One thousand and one dollars. That's it. Now we look at the answer choices and find the one that comes closest to it. And among all the answer choices, the one that comes closest to it is, is one thousand and one dollar and fifty-two cents. That's your answer choice D. That's your answer choice D. That's all. So don't make it too complicated unnecessarily. Leave it. Leave it alone. Keep it simple. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number eighteen. Number eighteen. I'm giving you a couple of seconds in case I was obstructing your view. Number 18. In number 18 we deal with the concept of reconciliation of an account. Again, this is something we have come across before also on day number 20 and on day number 21. Reconciliation of the account. The key here, as I always remind you, is to keep your debits and credits separate. Don't go back and forth, back and forth. Keep all the debits in one place, keep all the credits in one place. Credit is the money coming in the account. Debits are all the money that are, that are leaving the account. So let's take care of debit first. Typically, I like to take care of the credit first. I'm going to stick with my habit. Let's take care of the credits. Credits are the amounts that are coming in the account, and we are told that we have an initial balance, initial balance of $853.91. Again, we're not going to waste our time writing out the precise amount, $853.91. Let's round it to $854. So that's the money that you start out with. And then we are told that the total deposits that are made in the account, the total deposits that we are told that are made in the account are $1910.15. Again, we can forget the $0.15, cents. it's just $1910. So that's the total credits. So we end up with a 4, 5 plus 1 is 6. 8 plus 8 would be 16, 16 plus 1 is 17, 7 carry 1, and we get to $2,764 is what we get for the total credits. Now let's take care of the debits. Debits is where all the money is leaving the account. Typically, is the amount of checks that you write, minus any service fees, minus any penalty or, 
or surcharges that you have to pay. Maybe you bounce the check or something. So things like things of that nature. So here we have total. So you your debits here. Checks written. Checks written, which we are told are. 1339 11 $1339 $1339 and 11 cents we're going to forget the 11 cents let's just write down as 1339 any service charges yes there is a fee there is a fee in the amount of $35 what the hell what kind of checking account is this let me just make sure I did not copy it wrong in my notes Oh yes, because you bounced a check, you see, the, 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 the bounced check here, which has a return check charge of $35. In addition to that, there is typically a service charge on the account per month. I, I pay, I think, about $2 or maybe $2.50, I don't remember, something like that. Let's see if there is anything here. $35 of no, that's right. But typically there is a, just a service charge of $2, $2.50, $3 if the balance drops below a certain level. But there, there isn't any here. So that's all. There is no service charge fee, just the bounce check. Let's add them up. 9 plus 4 is 14. 9, 9 plus 5 is 14. 4, carry 1. 1, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And this is the 3, and this is your 1. Those are the total debits. These are the total credits. We just subtract the debits from the credits and we are done. 1374. But this is this is what I'm talking about keeping your work clean. If you do not keep your work clean, it'll be it'll be more difficult and it'll be easier to make mistakes. This is not a difficult problem, it's just a matter of paying attention. 4 minus 4 is 0. Again, here I'm gonna put this down so you can see it. In order for us to be in order for us to be able to subtract 7 from the 6, we have to borrow one from here. As soon as you borrow one from here, change that to a 6 so that you don't forget. Now this becomes 16, 16 minus 7 is going to be 9. And this is no longer 7, it became 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. And 2 minus 1 is 1. There you go. $1390. Now we're going to look at the answer choices and pick the one that comes closest to it. It's not going to be exact because we've been rounding things left and right, the cents. But we're looking for 1390. 1390, we have 13, we have 1330, we have 1355. 1390, 1425, and 1460. The answer choices that they give you are 13, 1355, that's A, then they give you 1390, which is B, then they give us 1425, 1425, which is C, and finally they give us 1460. 1460. The reason I'm writing on the blackboard is to bring it to your attention as to how far apart they are. We're looking for 30, 1390, that's our answer choice B. 1390, which is expressed as 1389.95. 1390. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.